Hi, my name is Kelsey Morris and I'm a member of the PBIS Applications Training Team. Today I'm going to walk you through how to generate custom reports using the new drill down feature in the Swiss 5 application. You can see I'm located already at the main Swiss dashboard. I can easily begin to develop a custom report and drill down in my data by clicking on the drill down icon. When I click on the drill down icon, which is located in the navigation row at the top, it opens up for me the drill down workspace. This is the workspace where I can begin to include specific parameters with which I want to refine my search and narrow my data set. You see in this workspace that I have various report filters, which can either be included or excluded in the data set. If I leave these two things blank and begin by generating a report, Swiss loads for me information about every referral ever entered in my building. You can see here in the summary that I start with 1,484 referrals made up of 526 different students referred by 78 different staff members. The value in using the drill down report is to enhance my database decision making. I want to use the drill down report anytime I notice a red flag from my main dashboard. Let's go back to the main dashboard and see if we can identify any red flags. When I click on dashboard here in the navigation row, it takes me back to the main Swiss dashboard. I want to begin my drill down by looking at these seven featured reports and seeing if there is something that pops up to me as a red flag or something that requires a further level of analysis. For instance, here on referrals by time, I can see that something is happening around one o'clock. I don't know what and I don't know with whom, but I know something is happening at one o'clock. I can also see here on the graph for referrals by problem behavior that we have a problem with inappropriate language. I don't know with who, I don't know where or at what time, but I know inappropriate language is something that I might want to dig deeper with. The same by looking at referrals by grade. I can see that our 8th graders, our 7th graders, and our 5th graders are the three grades that comprise the majority of referrals. I don't really know what's going on, but I know that there is a problem which might need a deeper level of analysis. Using the red flags that I find on the Swiss dashboard is how I begin my drill down. Let's see if we can drill down and further identify what's happening with inappropriate language. So we're going to do a drill down today with inappropriate language. I go up to the drill down icon and open up the drill down workspace. I know that I want to work with inappropriate language, so I come over to the report filter, go down to the report filter of problem behavior, and when I click on it, now I have all of the problem behaviors with which a referral could be entered. I want to locate inappropriate language and include that. Here, abusive language slash inappropriate language is what I want to include in the data set. I can do that one of two ways. I can either right click on that specific report filter and either add to include filters or add to exclude filters, or I can simply click on it and drag it to either the include in data set or excluding data set portions. I'm going to include this in the data set. Now I'm going to click generate again and we'll see that we pare down our referral list. Our referrals are now pared down from 1,484 to only 272. However, this pared down list is still comprehensive spanning all the years that I've had access to the Swiss application. If my red flag from the dashboard is indicating something that's happening in the current school year, then I need to include the current school year in the data set. Again, I can either drag and drop or right click and add. Once I have that included in the data set, I need to click generate and generate this new information. Now we've pared it down to only 84 referrals, 
dealing with inappropriate language in the current school year. You can see here that I now have a nice graph telling me where those referrals for inappropriate language are taking place. Seems that the majority of inappropriate language is happening in the classroom, and then in regards to non-classroom settings, it's happening in the cafeteria, in the playground, the library, the bus zone, the hallway, common areas, the bathroom, gym, parking lot, and on the bus. It seems that cafeteria is the most frequent non-classroom setting. So that might be somewhere that I want to drill down a little further and better understand what's happening in the cafeteria with inappropriate language. I can also see that I have an associated data table down below letting me know each of the individual referrals that are happening with inappropriate language. By using the graph type drop down menu, I can change from a location graph to a grade level graph, for instance, and see that our eighth graders and seventh graders are primarily using inappropriate language. Those are the two grade levels that are contributing most of the referrals for inappropriate language. I can also change my graph type to location and better understand where things are happening, as well as change my graph type to time of day and see the times of day where inappropriate language is most being referred. Let's go back to our grade levels and we'll choose to drill down further with our 8th graders. I specifically want to know when are our 8th graders using inappropriate language. That helps me better use my decision-making systems to support our students and staff members. So I'm going to go over to the report filters for grade, scroll down to 8th grade, and again, I can either drag and drop or I can right-click and add. Once I've added that new report filter, I'm going to generate, and I can see that I have 21 referrals for 8th graders using inappropriate language. I can change my graph type again and figure out where is the location for 8th graders to use inappropriate language, and 8th graders are using inappropriate language primarily in the classroom. I can change my graph type again and identify the time of day that 8th graders are using inappropriate language. And it seems like it's primarily happening in the afternoon, between 1 o'clock and 3.15, the end of our school day. If I want to drill down further and figure out what's happening during this block of time, I can go to the time report filter, include a time range, as a report filter, and I can change the start time to 1 o'clock and the end time to 3.15 and generate again. Now I'm seeing only the referrals from the 8th grade for inappropriate language happening between the time frame of 1 and 3.15 in the afternoon. If I need to know what is the perceived motivation that is maintaining these referrals? I can change the graph type to perceived motivation and see that the referrals are happening to avoid task. Now, with this new information, I can work with the 8th grade teachers to identify what supports and systems are we putting in place in the afternoon session to help our students no longer avoid the task but to engage in the task. I can see that we have 13 students that are using inappropriate language as a form of task avoidance. Those are some of the features that you can use with the new drill down report. By including information in the data set and excluding information in the data set, you can further analyze your data with a more laser-like focus to enhance your database decision making. Once you've done a drill down, you can either print by clicking on the print button and choosing whether you want to print that graph or that table or both. You can also click preview and have a preview of how the information will be formatted for your printing purposes. Another great feature here in the drill down is the ability to save a template and load a saved template. 
For example, if our building's decision-making team, or our problem-solving team, was going to continue to monitor our efforts with our 8th graders using inappropriate language in the afternoon, we might want to come back to this information on a regular basis for progress monitoring purposes. Instead of every time I come back having to re-include things in the data set and reinvent this work every time, I could simply save the current report template I have so that way I can easily load it again. I do that by clicking Save Report Template. It then asks me what name I want to give the report template. For instance, in this case, I could put in 8th grade inappropriate language. Can fix my spelling mistake. And then if this is something that only I want to view regularly, then I would not check the box share template within school. However, if our problem solving team needs to use this information on a regular basis for progress monitoring purposes, I can share this template with all of the other users in my school. Clicking the box for share template within school means that every user who has a Swiss account for my school can access this template for progress monitoring purposes. However, because I'm the person that created it, only I have the ability to edit and modify the template as needed. All other users can simply use the information and read the graphs and tables. Once I've identified the label I want to give this template and whether or not I want to share it within the school, I click OK. Because I'm in the demo account, I can't show you what the template is going to look like. However, I'm going to move to my personal facilitator account and let's take a look at what a saved template will look like for loading purposes. Here in my facilitator account, I'm going to click on drill down and I'm going to do a simple one with only third grade. I'm going to click Save Report Template if this is something I want to come back to on a regular basis. I'm going to give it an appropriate name that I and other users that I share with will recognize. I want to decide if I want to share this template within the school or not. And once I've made my decisions, I'm going to click OK to save this report template. Now my report template is saved here in the Load Report drop-down. I see the report template I just created and saved with the label third grade and then the word me in parentheses. That designates that I am the person who created this report template. If for some reason a colleague of mine, namely Julie, had created a report template and was sharing with me, then I would see Julie's name here in parentheses. I can load the report template by using the drop-down menu, clicking on the template, and instantly loading it. I also have the ability to load this template when I'm viewing other reports in the reporting dashboard. For example, if I'm in the reporting dashboard, I have the icon for drill down. Clicking on that icon allows me to either go to the drill down reports workspace or load templates that have already been saved. For example, the simple third grade template that I just created is here. I can click on it and load it. The nice thing about loading a saved template for progress monitoring purposes is that I still have the flexibility to continue to open the other reports available in Swiss and have the ease and flexibility to tab back and forth between those other reports and my saved report that I'm using for progress monitoring purposes. I'm going to go back now to the main Swiss application and back to our 8th graders with inappropriate language. Here I'm back in the main application working with our 8th graders using inappropriate language for task avoidance in the afternoon. You noticed that I just formatted my problem statement using precise language, identifying the who, what, when, where, and why of the problem issue. I was able to drill down to this level of analysis by starting at the dashboard and identifying something off of the dashboard that was a red flag or indicator for a deeper level of analysis. Once I identified an indicator that needed a deeper level of analysis, 
I went to the drill down feature in Swiss and began to drill down by choosing specific report filters to include in my data set. That's a brief overview of how to use the drill down feature in the newest release of the Swiss application.